Hello everyone, it is Dan, also known as Moderately Anonymous MTG. We are back with another installment of our intro to CDH series with another commander that I really love, Pivot Seller of Secrets. This is a deck that you might enjoy if you like playing Control, if you like playing decks with consistent game plans, if you like decks with one card win cons, and if you like decks that play responsibly with lots of creature removal and interaction. Pivot is a 6-6 Esper Sphinx Rogue, for three white, blue, black that has flying and ward three, meaning if Tivit becomes the target of a spell or ability, that spell or ability is countered unless his controller pays three, and it also has an ability called Council's Dilemma. Council's Dilemma says whenever Tivit enters the battlefield or deals combat damage to a player, starting with you, each player votes for evidence or bribery. For each evidence vote, investigate, meaning make a clue token. For each bribery vote, create a treasure token. While voting, you may vote an additional time. Tivit's main game plan is easy to understand and enact because it's very simple. Tivit creates 5 artifacts no matter how many player votes, meaning that Tivit has a 1 card win con in the 99 with Time Sieve. Time Sieve is an artifact for Demir mana that says tap, sacrifice 5 artifacts, take an extra turn. Because Tivit makes 5 artifacts when he enters or hits for combat damage, that means we can use Time Sieve to take infinite turns where we beat down our opponents with a 6-6 flyer over 12 turns, 4 per opponent, or until we find a deterministic win con, whichever happens first. Our main game plan is always to follow the path of least resistance. That means casting Tivit, casting Time Sieve, and going infinite. Ideally, we'll mulligan to hands that can cast Tivit on turn 2 or 3 with the help of cards like Jeweled Lotus, Grim Monolith, and Mana Ball. The deck is outfitted with a large suite of Mana Rocks that simultaneously help us power out Tivit, as well as giving fuel to our Time Sieve. Besides casting Mana Rocks in the first couple turns, we also want to cast asymmetrical stacks pieces like Dranith Magistrate, Lavinia Azorius Renegade, Curse Totem, or Graph Digger's Cage that can either slow down opponents who have faster decks than ours, or shut off mid-range decks from their advantage engines. Once we've set up our own advantage engine in Tibet, we want to start looking for our combo pieces. We've talked about Time Sieve already as our main game plan, but this deck also has several backup win cons. We're of course running Thassa's Oracle and Demonic Consultation or Tainted Pact. Notion Thief and Time Twister presents a soft win where we strip our opponents of all of their cards, draw 28 for ourselves, and likely we'll have the combination of mana and action spells to win the game. In the same vein, this is also a Nad Nauseam deck. While Ad Nauseam doesn't win the game on its own, it draws so many cards that it makes the probability of our three opponents having more interaction than we do almost impossible. Another win con that we can set up is Teferi Time Raveler, Displacer Kitten, and a zero mana artifact like Mox Opal. We can use Teferi's downtick ability to bounce our mocks. We cast our mocks and trigger Kitten's ability. The trigger flickers Teferi, who now comes in with four loyalty counters again, and we can bounce the mox opal, rinsing and repeating, making mana off the mox opal every time, and drawing through our deck with Teferi's ability until we can find our Thassa's Oracle or our Praetor's Crest to take one from an opponent. A very important note about the two cards we just mentioned. The first is that Displacer Kitten is another advantage dungeon with Tibbet. Every time we cast a non-creature spell, we flicker Tibbet, making at least two treasures, and also clues to continue to draw through our deck. With zero and one mana spells, we can start generating massive amounts of mana and card draw with Tibbet. The second note is about Teferi. Silence effects like Teferi, Grand Abolisher, and Literal Silence all enable us to perform our combos without needing to interact on the stack. If we plan to win over multiple turns via combat damage with Tibbet, the permanent silence effects like Teferi and Abolisher are the most crucial because they can save us from all sorts of interaction. Maybe an opponent couldn't counter your Time Sieve, but they might be able to path to exile your Tibbet, stopping you dead in your tracks. However, casting Teferi and passing the turn is an extremely dangerous game. Teferi means all of your opponents will have a silence effect on their turn as well. It's incorrect to cast Teferi and pass about 99.9% .9 of the time. Make sure if you're trying to resolve Teferi, you're doing it before you win in the same turn. Being a combo deck and in black, we have lots of restrictionless tutors like Demonic Tutor and Imperial Seal that can get us anything. While making proactive plays towards your combo pieces is usually a good idea, keep in mind that Tibbet is a control deck. Using an early game tutor to find removal for problematic hate pieces, finding hate pieces of your own like Graph Digger's Cage that shut off red Underworld Breach decks, or Cursed Totem to shut off mid-range creature decks can be crucial plays to making sure you have the upper hand on the table. Once we're attempting our win with Tibbet, one thing that can potentially stand in our way is opposing flyers. Importantly, Tibbet only triggers when he hits an opponent for combat damage, meaning common flying blockers like Krom and Birds of Paradise are going to be enough to force you to pass if you don't have excessive artifacts to sacrifice to Time Sieve. 
This heavily incentivizes our deck to run lots of spot removal like Swords to Plowshares, Soul Partition, March of Swirling Mist, and one of our greatest control assets are asymmetrical board wipes like Cyclonic Rift, Winds of Abandon, and Toxic Deluge. Deluge, of course, gets our own creatures, but Tibbet being a 6-6 means that we put him out of range of most of the biggest creatures commonly found in CEDH like Winota and Krom. While getting Tibbet out is a main priority, there's no harm in not being able to immediately win. We have plenty of control pieces to help us accrue mana and card advantage over multiple turns with Tibbet's ability. And clue tokens mean that we always have access to more cards as long as we have mana to spend on it. Clue tokens also mean that our top deck tutors like Imperial Seal, Mystical Tutor, Vampiric Tutor, and Enlightened Tutor that usually cost us a draw step can be used to get a card immediately to our hand for an extra 2 mana. When looking at opening hands, we want primarily a lot of mana or a way to get a lot of mana so that we can cast Tibbet. That means hands with Jeweled Lotus effects, top deck tutors that can grab those pieces like Imperial Seal or Enlightened Tutor. It's also nice to have some specific interaction for your pod. Whether that's counter magic for aggressive Grixis decks, or removal effects for opposing mid-range decks like Cyclonic Rift or Swords to Plowshares, we'd also like to see something in the way of an advantage spell, whether that's the gold standard in Ristic Study or Mystic Remora, or something more passive like Smothering Tide or Esper Sentinel. While Ad Nauseam is a notoriously great spell, our deck isn't the best at taking advantage of the full potential of its power. So if you're deciding on how to spend your tutors in the early game, remember that resolving and protecting a Ristic Study to sculpt the perfect protected win is almost always better than gambling on the outcome of an Ad Nauseam. Divid is a newer commander on the CDH scene, but one that's put up a lot of strong results in competition, and while some of the combo lines in this deck are a little bit more complex, it presents an extremely strong and straightforward lines as its main win conditions. Something that makes Tibbet a little more unnaturally powerful is that we're currently in a meta where effects like Null Rod are not very good. One sideboard card I would suggest to put in the main deck if you see Null Rod in your local meta is Urza Lord High Artificer. Time save will always be shut down by Null Rod effects, but Urza at least allows us to use this ability to tap artifacts for mana. If you want to see a deck list for Tibbet, check the video description below. You can also find a link for the Esper CDH Discord server, which has plenty of Tibbet pilots and Esper mages that can help you understand and play your favorite Sphinx Rogue. If you want to see Tibbet in action, check out the link above to catch gameplay episodes with Tibbet here on the channel. Tibbet is a powerful and fun vehicle for figuring out how you can grind value in the mid game in CDH, and a deck that can teach you valuable lessons about using your interaction. I hope you enjoyed this next installment of the series. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you want to help directly support this content, consider joining our Patreon to get access to our private Discord, early access to videos like this, and dozens of hours of bonus content. Be good to yourselves, everyone.